Recently, I showed you guys how I removed the popcorn from the ceiling in my laundry room. And although it looked okay, I wasn't 100% satisfied with the end result of the texture of the ceiling. So this time I decided to try something a little different in my pantry and it turned out amazing. I'm going to show you guys today how I removed the popcorn texture from the ceiling and did a skim coat to give it a brand new, perfectly smooth texture to start over with. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss any future content on this channel. The first thing you want to do is just take some cheap plastic from the Dollar Tree or the hardware store and using painter's tape, hang it on all of the walls right underneath the edge of the ceiling. Popcorn ceiling makes a massive mess and this will keep me from having to scrub the walls near as much whenever I go to paint them afterwards. You'll also want to protect your flooring. In my case, I'm removing the flooring so I'm not worried about it, but if you are keeping your flooring, then make sure and cover that up as well. And the last thing I want to mention before getting started on your popcorn ceiling removal, you want to make sure you don't have any asbestos in the popcorn that you're removing. I will leave some links in the description box on how to find out if you have asbestos or not, as well as a full list of supplies for everything that I'm using in this video. To get started, you need just a simple lawn sprayer like the one I'm using here. These are really inexpensive. I got mine on Amazon and I will link that down in the description box. I use warm water and spray it evenly across the entire section that I'm going to be working on first. After I let that soak in for a minute, I take my spatula and start to run it across the ceiling. If the popcorn texture doesn't just easily fall right off of the drywall, then you may need to do another pass of warm water with your sprayer, letting it soak for another couple of seconds before giving it a try again. And now you can see that after after that second pass with the sprayer, the popcorn just falls right off of the drywall like mush. Use your spatula to remove the popcorn ceiling in rows and don't forget to remove all the popcorn along the edges of the ceiling as well. After removing the popcorn from that first section, I move along with my water sprayer and spray the next section of popcorn that I want to remove. In the last room that I did, I used an extendable scraper that has like a really wide scraping edge and that worked for me, but in this smaller room, I couldn't use that extendable pole. So I went with this just basic spatula and I think in the end, I might prefer using the spatula instead. I felt like I had more control over what I was removing and I didn't leave any gouges in the ceiling this time, which was an issue that I had in the previous rooms that I used the larger scraper with. One last thing I wanted to mention before moving on to the skim coat is to make sure you turn off the light in your room or shut off the power from the breaker. I know I'm not practicing what I preach right now, there's no natural light in this space. So I needed the additional light plus the lights I brought in here with me to be able to see what I was doing. But in your own home, I would not do what I did. Once I finished scraping the ceiling, I left it to dry overnight. You want the drywall to be completely dry all the way through before you start patching or skim coating over that surface. Once the drywall had completely dried, I went in and initially was just using some product that I already had on hand. The problem was it was way too thick and once I decided I wanted to skim coat the entire ceiling, I knew 
this wasn't going to work for what I needed to do. I went to Home Depot and I picked up this USG Sheetrock brand all-purpose joint compound. This does come pre-mixed, but when you're skim coating the ceiling, you want to go ahead and grab an extra bucket and a mixer so you can add a little bit of water just to thin it out a little bit. It should end up being about the consistency of thick pancake batter or like a thick whipped cream. Then to skim coat the ceiling, I have a 10 inch taping knife and a mud pan that I've filled up with the joint compound and I load it onto the taping knife and starting at the outside edge of the ceiling, I drag it inwards towards the center of the ceiling. The main goal here is just to get all of the edges covered before I start working on the main center area of the ceiling. This is one of those things where you just kind of get the hang for it as you move along. It's easy to not put enough product on your taping knife and I learned as I moved along that it worked better if I put more on there than I thought I was going to need and if I put less pressure than I thought I needed as well. Once I got the edges done, I started loading up the taping knife and filling in the rest of of this side of the ceiling. Once I have the ceiling covered, I took my taping knife and I just gently glide it across the ceiling. Any excess material on the ceiling will come off onto the taping knife and I can scrape it off into my mud pan. And if I see any spots that don't have enough material, I can still go back and add more. Then once I was done with the first coat, I left it overnight to dry. This is what the ceiling looked like the following morning when I came to check on it. When your ceiling turns white like this, that's how you'll know it's ready for a second coat. And I started my second coat the exact same way I did the first coat. I worked my way around the edges of the ceiling and then I covered the rest of the ceiling and went back and smoothed it out. And I would say that if you're like me and you've never done a skim coat on a ceiling before. I was really discouraged and I was kind of worried when I did the first coat that it was gonna look worse than it might have looked if I had just left it alone and just patched and painted it like I did the laundry room. But after coming in here and seeing how well the first coat looked by itself, I was really encouraged and really excited to get the second coat done. I know that my application doesn't look professional because I I'm not a professional, I'm a DIYer, I'm doing all of this at home and I'm self-taught, but the end result ended up turning out fantastic. So I just wanted to add that in there for all of you DIYers at home, don't feel discouraged, it will turn out great in the end. So for this second coat, my main objective is to get the finish as smooth as I possibly can. I'm focusing more on the areas that there may be flaws from the first coat. So anywhere that there may be jump marks from my blade on the first coat, I'm going over those areas and trying to fill in those spaces between the peaks and the valleys. Also, I noticed that there were some areas that looked like I just missed an entire little section of ceiling so I made the layer a little bit thicker in those areas to even it out with this second coat. Then after I got that whole side of the ceiling covered I went back and just like I did the first time around I very gently glide the blade over the surface of the ceiling just removing any excess material. If there was a spot that I maybe pressed a little too firmly and left a blade mark I could go back across that section from the opposite direction and fill in that blade mark with a little bit of joint compound that's just sitting on my blade. You're going to go back and sand the surface after this last coat dries, so any small imperfections, you can deal with that once it dries and you sand it down. When I was satisfied with everything, I stepped away and left the ceiling to dry overnight. 
And I wanted to show you guys before moving on, this is the mess that I was left with when I was done. I knew I was gonna probably sling joint compound everywhere, so I decided not to clean up the popcorn mess until I was done with the skim coat as well. And that ended up being for a good reason because I did drop chunks of compound all over the floor. I cleaned up the mess really quick before moving on so I could just have a clean, safe working environment. I will be ripping out the tile as part of this pantry makeover, so I'm not worried about the tile coming completely clean. I just wanted to at least get the trash thrown away and sweep up the chunks of stuff off the floor. The ceiling looks fantastic after the second coat has dried. To deal with any of the flaws that might still be there, I'm taking a handheld sander with 150 grit sandpaper and going over any of the visible flaws in the ceiling. You don't want to sand away too much of the surface, so with the 150 grit, you mainly just want to go over any waves that might still be visible or any ledges or peaks in the drywall that you didn't get smoothed out during the skim coat process. This creates a ton of dust, so you want to make sure that you wear a mask. Also, you will notice that the 150 grit will cause little scratches in the finish of the ceiling, but by the end, it won't be noticeable. After sanding down the more noticeable flaws, I switched to a 220 fine grit sandpaper, and I used that lightly over most of the surface of the ceiling. That also helped to smooth out the entire surface as well as get rid of some of the scratch marks that the other paper left behind. After sanding the ceiling and before painting, I came in with a clean rag and thoroughly wiped the entire room down. I went through a few rags and several passes to get as much of the dust cleaned up out of the space as possible. After getting the pantry cleaned up, I came back in with my Zinser water-based primer and applied two coats to the ceiling. I initially tried to use a microfiber roller and this roller is not a good option for this smooth surface on the ceiling. It wanted to slip across the surface instead of rolling like it should. It was leaving a weird texture that I didn't like. So I ended up switching to a high density foam roller and I went back over that first coat of primer to smooth it out. And then again, I used that same roller for the second coat and that rolled really well across the smooth surface and it didn't add any weird texture to it. Also, any of the small scratches that would have been left from that fine grit sandpaper, the primer fills it in and by the time I was done priming the ceiling, I couldn't really notice any flaws in the ceiling at all, aside from maybe a few little things that I missed. Then after the primer dried, I came back in and added two coats of this bright white ceiling paint by Sherwin-Williams. And this is the end result of my popcorn ceiling removal and skim coat. I still need to have the new light fixture hung and I will touch up the edges of the ceiling once I'm done painting the walls. But other than that, it's done. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss my next video where I'm going to show you guys how I made my DIY pantry shelving. And in the meantime, you can check out one of the videos listed here. Until next time, thank you guys so much for watching.